now going to do some curves transformations. Right. First off, we're going to just cover the preview. We're going to do a, an S curve um, just in the RB, RGBK channel. So we just want to make two points one here and one up here. We're going to drag the bottom of the curve down slightly. This is only a small amount, you don't really want to go too much, which actually starts to bring the blacks down. And then when we grab the top and bring it the other way, it starts to enhance. You can see it starts to blow out the core if you're not careful. So you have to, I'm just going to go very, very slight. And it is very slight. It looks good in the preview. Apply that to the image. Didn't really notice much of a change, but it's the black point that got changed. Also, while we're here, we're going to do a saturation again. Now, we've got to be very careful now not to start making it look too synthetic. Too much saturation just kills an image. So, as you can see, dead image. So we want to just bring it up. We do want some colour, but we don't want too much. Okay, that doesn't look too bad. Let's try it. Okay, yep, that's all right. Hmm. It's close. Yeah. Okay. They may come back and change that, but uh, for now we'll leave it. Let's look at the histogram. Now we have definite room in the front where we can start to bring it in. I'm not really too concerned about clipping green data because most of it was gets removed anyway. Oh, preview. Always preview. So if we start to bring it in. Starts to lose, see that's four percent clip, which is not where I want to be. Not at all. Well under one percent. Half a percent clip. Okay. That's not too bad. Now the mid slider, if you start bumping it up, see so the halo just becomes more apparent. It blows the core. You can no. You can of course go the other way to actually bring it down but I think we're just going to leave it about there that's good we're going to apply it okay histogram done now that really is pretty much where I would stop now I think much more and yeah you can start to look bad um all right so that's pretty much it for this image um there is one last thing i'm going to do and that's with the histogram transformation it's quite bright still um in science i i probably would go back and make adjustments to the luminance file um just maybe some lower that brightness uh I think that's probably the best way to deal with that but I've just for now all I'm going to do is just take some of the edge off of it and I'm actually going to move the mid toad slider the opposite direction so I'm just going to bring it down a bit I don't want to go too far so sort of just so if we go from where it was to somewhere around there just take some of that haloing effect so we'll do that we'll, we'll apply that that's better. Yeah. Okay. That's definitely better. Okay. So there we go. I'm quite happy with the way that came out. Um, good thing about it is you can always save once the master files are saved, you can always just go back and just recombine them and try different things, which is nice. Um, 
Uh, I would probably add borders to it and then, you know, put my name on, name of the target, etc. Okay. But people found this sort of interesting, really, of how we've come from, uh, if we have a look at, oops, luminance from our single frame luminance channel to then going through the stacking, having the stack master, then combining them, then doing all the post process to end up with this. Uh, quite a journey. The more you do it, the easier it gets, I have to admit. Um, do a lot of things in autopilot now. Still learning, obviously, this is, I'm still quite new to Pix Insight. I'm definitely not a master. Um, it's such a big thing and there's so many different processes and ways to do things. And, and I found generally, you never do the same thing twice. Even on the same targets, um, I processed some data I had. Admittedly, it was a different data set, but it was of the same target. And uh, yeah, I end up doing things completely different. And I think you'll just sort of find your own sort of styles and way to do things. And that's the good thing about it. There's no rules. So you can just go to town, do what you want, play around, experiment. And at the end of the day, something you should be proud of. All that time and effort to go in to produce a good image like this. Happy days. So that's it. Thanks for watching the series. See you again soon. just when I thought I'd finished the video I was at work today and uh, I was thinking about the images as I regularly do and it got me thinking about going back and changing some of that overall brightness in the luminance so <laughs> I came home and I did just that and I did the process slightly different on the image on the left so you can see that same target same data but slightly different outcomes now I think I actually prefer the way this one has come out to this one. Um, it's still quite bright, this image, and I'm not really too sure on the purpley haze that's going on here. So I redid this one. Um, I actually used the masks in the end to help preserve the inner details without having this halo on the right. And the colors looked a lot better, I think. So this is just an example of how little tweaks here and there can you know produce a different image from the same data it's just a matter of tweaking playing around and find finding what you like the best so and as if we look at this image as well which, while i've been i've got m31 eyes at the moment because i've been staring at these images for quite a while and sometimes that's a bad thing i think it's good to take a break every now and then to come back reassess because you start to just yeah everything just doesn't look right i don't know if it's just a thing for me or what i don't know but as i was looking around the image some things i i sort of i glanced over before not really paid much attention to uh, if we scroll in especially over here we have this this detail in here and i mean this is obviously we're going to go in close but and it's not particularly clear but these what look like possibly nebula not entirely sure I might have to look this up and this one as well looks like uh, I don't know just I imagined what it would be <laughs> being able to see these closer like if you're in Andromeda and you can see these what they would actually look like there's some really cool looking stuff in here it makes me want to go there <laughs> sod the Mars trip let's go to Andromeda instead <laughs> see there's some really cool stuff I'm really going to have to check this out and see what it is. So, so yeah, I just wanted to show the different picture, which I think is better. It's, the colors look a lot nicer. And yeah, and I didn't have to um, shift the histogram so much as well with the masks because I could keep the star saturation lower without boosting everything and, and making these look really bad. So they're, they're still quite nice. They're not oversaturated, which is good. Yeah, so... There we go. <laughs> Just thought I'd add that to the end. Thanks again. Goodbye.